Right, so this part of our array tutorial will focus on looking at number arrays. So we looked at three main types of number variables. We looked at ints, floats, and doubles. And so we're going to focus on those three types of arrays. So we're going to basically create and initialize some, and we're going to look at some examples of each. So where we might see ints, floats, and double arrays in real life. Okay, so now we've seen what Boolean arrays look like, let's take a look at some number arrays. So these are going to be integers, floats, and doubles. Now, I'm not really going to focus on float arrays so much, because they're pretty much the same as double arrays, just with floats instead of doubles. Now, if you can't really remember the difference between the three different number types, integers cannot contain decimal places, so integers are whole numbers only, but can be zero. Whereas floats and doubles are decimal numbers, well, they can be decimal numbers or they can not have no decimals, but doubles have twice the precision of floats. So this means doubles can display up to 14 decimal places, whereas floats can display only up to 7. Also, the reason I use doubles rather than floats is because, for a start, the compiler automatically assumes all decimal places are doubles, unless we declare them of type float. And also some of the built-in math functions need to take in doubles rather than floats. Not a whole lot of them use floats. So what I mean is if we create this variable int array, or not int array, let's just call it int1, and we'll give it the type int, but we give it a decimal number, then here we go, we get this error here saying, let's just wait for it to pop up, mm, it's not going to, Okay, there we go. It says cannot convert from type double to int. And that's because the compiler sees this decimal place and thinks, oh, it must be a double, but we're declaring it of type int, so, you know, there's a problem there. Okay, so I'm not really going to talk much about floats. Just note that they're pretty much the same, well, almost the same as doubles, just less precision. So, I mean, why would we want to use floats anyway, right? Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you what the different arrays look like and then we'll maybe look at some examples. So if we create this variable int array with a very original name and again we can do this one of two ways. We can just declare the type and initialize it to be a blank array. So there we go. We see the empty braces there which means that the compiler knows that this array has to contain integers is empty right now. Okay, so we can either do that or we can do this, give it the type, and then populate it with values right away. So we can give it like 1, 2, and 3 or something, and we know that the array contains 1, 2, and 3. However, you shouldn't be able to mix and match and put in some kind of a string like this. And yeah, there we go, we get the error. It says cannot convert value of type string to int. And that's because we specified that this array should contain only integers and we can't feed it in anything else. Okay, so this could be an integer array and maybe some places that you'll see integer arrays would be, and the, the example I like to use with integers is movement commands. So let's say you have a character and let's just call this variable position array. Okay, and we're going to give it type int. And let's just give it some values. So maybe our character starts in this is, think about a character in a video game. So maybe he or she starts at zero and maybe moves to four, then to negative two, then to ten, then to five, then eight, then back to zero. Okay? So this could be a list of movement positions. Maybe if you're going into like robotics or something, you might want to kind of program in how many steps or how many like meters or something you want it to move. So this is where you might see int arrays is basically anywhere you have a list of whole numbers only. Okay. So again, movement commands generally aren't decimal numbers because you don't really have kind of half of a movement. And again, like with booleans, we can pass in some variables. So if we created a variable int1 and gave it the value of 5 or something, then we could pass in int1. And that's just fine to do. No, not int16. We want int1. 
and let's see if this value changes and what's the error here use of unresolved identifier in one hmm. oh right that's because we declared it afterwards so I'm just going to move up here there we go so now we have no problems and this should change to a 5 yeah there we go and it changes to a 5 so we can pass in variables or we can pass in specific values okay so those are int arrays now let's look at double arrays so pretty much the same thing but with doubles so we're just gonna have double array and again we can either declare it give it the type here so double and then initialize it to be blank or we can just initialize it on the same line so I think I'm gonna do that give it double and we'll just give it some values something like 0 0.3 in fact let's let's jump right into a real example rather than calling this double array I'm gonna call this list of transactions so this is coming back to kinda of like a bank account idea where perhaps we have our bank statement for the month or for the week or something and we've made some transactions so the first might be like $500 deposit maybe the second is like a three hundred and forty five and ninety cents transaction so maybe a purchase or something then maybe we took out another like twenty seven dollars and fifty cents and then added in another six hundred and seventy eight something like this this is where you might see a double array and actually that's a good example of doubles is using money because again decimal places there's only two decimal places so we don't really need the precision of a double but like I said decimal decimal numbers are automatically considered doubles unless we specify them to be of type float anyway so yeah this is where you might see a double array list of bank transactions where we could have a bunch of uh, a bunch of deposits or withdrawals and stuff like that so there you go so this is ints and double arrays and float arrays pretty much the same thing I mean I can go over it if you guys want so we could just have this list of floats and of type float and it's pretty much the same thing so we can just give it like 5.5, 6.6, 7.7 8.8 .8, and so on and so forth so very similar to a double array again just with floats which have half the precision okay so this is in float and double arrays this is what an integer array looks like again you can pass it values that you've stored in a variable in this case in one we pass that in here and this is double arrays we can do the same thing if we want but in this case we won't and we just have a list of decimal numbers here same with floats and yeah so in arrays good example would be a bunch of movement or position commands because those are all going to be whole numbers whereas a good example of double arrays or float arrays might be a list of bank transactions because you'll have not necessarily whole numbers you'll have a bunch of dollars and a bunch of cents okay so that's in and double and float arrays next time we're going to be looking at character and string arrays Alright, so this part of our tutorial focused mostly on number arrays. So we looked more, more so at double and integer arrays than at float arrays because floats are really just kind of doubles with less precision. So we also had examples of, we used an example of a position array for the integer arrays. So this was just kind of a list of positions. Maybe we have some kind of character within a video game and we kind of want, it to move, want the character to move around so we can pass in this list of positions. Okay, and then we also had the example of a bank transaction for the double array. So this was a good idea. We had a basically just a list of numbers that represented dollar amounts. So the negative amounts were withdrawals, whereas the positive amounts were deposits. Okay, so into double arrays and floats as well we looked a little bit at, but mostly in, in double arrays. Not so different from Boolean arrays, pretty much the same way to initialize and create them, just with different kinds of values within the array itself. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the last two types of arrays, and these are going to be character and string arrays. 
So we're going to talk about where we would use character arrays because they're actually extremely useful for storing stuff like if you're passing in a large amount of data from a file, character arrays are generally how we store stuff like that, okay? So character arrays are really good for storing data. We're also going to talk about an example of a string array. So we're going to talk about string arrays and then give some examples. And a good example would be basically anything that can, well, anything that would contain a list of strings such as a bunch of names, team roster, stuff like that. Alright, so now we're going to look at our final two types of arrays, and those are going to be character and string arrays. So, so far we've looked at boolean arrays and integer and float and double arrays, and now on to character arrays. So, hmm, interesting. It's going to be pretty much the same thing as before, so let's create a variable character array. And it, like just like before, we can either initialize it to be like this, type character, and do this, and then this. So that would just initialize an empty array. Or we can just do this and populate it with values right away. So the difference, the, I think the main difference between the two types is that if we're doing it this way and just initializing it to be empty first, we use these round brackets here. Whereas if we are initializing it on the same line, we don't use the round brackets at all. We store our values in these square brackets. So if we were just to make some characters, let's just say A, B. Oh, I see what's going on there. And then C and then D. Okay, so this would just be a, oh, okay, so this would just be an, an example of a character array. So it's basically just a list of one letter or one unit characters. So we could put in some numbers here if we want, we could put in a one, we could put in like a symbol. One of these can be an emoji if we want, we saw that earlier, so if we go to edit, emoji and symbols, and then we can pick out an emoji if we want, so let's put in this scorpion. Like that's a scorpion. Then yeah, so we can do stuff like that. And basically it's just a list of one lesser characters. Now the times that character arrays come in really useful is when we're passing data into well into our into our program. So oftentimes you'll have not so much when you're creating these little apps, but if you're working on big projects and you have to pass in big binary files, generally we like to store them in character arrays. And that way we can extract individual characters and kind of sort it out a little bit. Because these binary files are just lists of characters. So sometimes they're in hex, sometimes they're just like numbers and letters. And so character arrays are a great way to store these files, store all of the information, and then it becomes easy to extract through uses of loops and stuff. But loops are another topic for another time. And... I think we'll discuss character arrays a little more in detail when we talk about loops. Okay? Just for now, recognize that it's basically just a list of characters. We've seen what individual characters look like. They can be symbols, letters, numbers, in this case emojis as well. And yeah, so good for storing that. If you want to think about a string, so let's say we have this variable string1 of type string, and we just give it this value hello then you can you can almost think of this as a character array itself. So a character array of length 5, with the first character being an H, and so on until the last character is an O. Okay, And as I said before, when I talked about strings in the variables part, some, language, some primitive languages like C actually don't have strings, they just have character arrays. Okay, So think about strings as character arrays if you want. And now we'll talk more about strings. So string arrays, pretty much the same deal as the other types. What we're going to do is, I'm just going to initialize this array to contain some string values. And perhaps the first one, let's, in fact, let's jump right into a real life example. Let's think about this as a, maybe a list of people in a race or something. So let's say there was a race. There were maybe four people in this race, and they came in first, second, third, and fourth. So we have this race positions array, and this will contain a bunch of names. So we can have something like Harry, 
not Harry. <laughs> is that even a name? And then we can have like Kyle. You have something like Sarah. And then we can have John or something. Okay, so this would be a good place you might see a string array is where there's a list of a bunch of names. So we could think about kind of like race positions. We could think about roll calls or like rosters, like a team roster might be an array of strings. And actually that's if we're storing stuff like that in a database, that's kind of how we want to represent stuff. We want to represent names as strings, numbers as either floats or sorry, as either doubles or ints and so on and so forth. So that's where strings really come in handy, good for like names, good for text in your code, messages, stuff like that. Okay, so this is what a string array looks like, basically just a list of individual arrays. And again, we can pass in variables that we've created as long as they're strings. So say we had string one and just wait for it to update here. It's taking a little bit of time. Oh, yeah, there we go. So then we replaced one with, I think we replaced, what did we have there? Can't even remember. We replaced it with hello anyway. But yeah, so you can do that just as long as it is a string and not something else like, you know, an integer or something. If we had this variable number one, type int, give it the value five, we couldn't pass in number one because we would get some kind of an error. And there we go, the error is popping up, saying cannot convert the value of type int to string. And that's exactly right, because we declared this array to be of type string. However, if we didn't give it a type, then we could add that in, but it's very bad practice because having an array of strings with a number in the middle of it doesn't really make much sense. Like when we come to access that one element, then we have to do a bunch of conversions, and it generally just doesn't really make sense to have a number in a list of names in this case. Okay, so that's basically all I have to say about characters and string arrays. Again, character arrays, individual characters of length one, they can be numbers, less as symbols, or in this case, emojis. So good example of where you might see character arrays is if you're passing large amounts of data into from a file into your program, those, are, those will generally store in character arrays so that we can take out individual pieces. Whereas string arrays, very similar to character arrays except they're strings and not characters. So you can remember strings are basically just character arrays of length, you know, however long we want. And we are using the example of race positions or basically just any kind of a list of names. So you could think about this as like a roll call or like a team roster as well. Okay, so that's string and character arrays. Next we'll be looking at some cool stuff that we can do with arrays such as accessing and modifying individual elements or kind of changing up the array a bit. So this part of the tutorial focused on character and string arrays, and these are the last two types of variable arrays that we'll see. The next part will be focusing more on kind of modifying and accessing elements within an array. So character arrays, as a recap, are good for storing data. So we might be passing in data from some kind of a text file, and generally we'll want to store it in a character array so that we can access and take out individual elements. The reason we do this is because it's not they're not always numbers. If we use stuff like hex code, then we definitely can't use numbers because that becomes, you know, it, it really messes things up. And we can't store it as one big string because that's just very impractical. Okay, so character arrays, great for passing in data, passing in and storing data. And string arrays are good for storing names of things. So in our example, we used the we used positions in a race and we had a string of names or rather we had a list of names which were all strings so string arrays are really good for storing lists of names so they could be names of people they could be names of objects they can be stuff like if we have an account we can have a string of stuff like usernames and passwords and stuff like that okay so really good for storing any kind of text yeah, and so coming up, we'll be focusing on how to modify and access individual elements within an array, as well as some really cool list functions that we can use on arrays.